Hello there guys, I'm Unstable Voltage and today I'm going to be taking a look at Rebel Galaxy, give you my first impressions of this new indie title that has recently been released. Just full disclosure, the review key for this review has been provided freely by the developer and the developer is Double Damage who are relatively new on the scene but the two main guys that head up Double Damage are the creative forces behind games such as Diablo and Torchlight. So there's a lot of pedigree going into making this game. Now another thing to just quickly let you know about is you won't hear any music uh, in this video and this game does have music in fact it has a fully licensed soundtrack which is the reason why the music isn't included in the video because YouTube would copyright flag me into the next century um, but the music in this game is absolutely fantastic it's basically um, all electric blues it really suits the game well it has very much uh, of a sort of fire fire uh, firefly feel to it which i guess is kind of what they were kind of going for because the entire theme of the game feels very much like firefly and that is not a bad thing so what is rebel galaxy well as you can see from just what's going on here in the menu screen uh, it is a space based um, sort of action rpg game now, there are far too few uh, space games available at the moment on the PC. Yes, you've got things like Elite Dangerous and the upcoming Star Citizen, but those games are very much focused around simulation. And you've got things like EVE Online, which are very, very complicated because they've been around for a long while and they've evolved and grown. There's a lot of depth to them. There's a lot of different things that you can do. But the learning curve is also quite hard. And of course, it's also PvP focused as well. So you've got that added problem. Maybe you don't want to pay a monthly fee. Maybe you don't want to get shot down by people that play the game 18 hours a day and just have much better ships than you and roam around in packs. There's lots of reasons why you would want a single player experience. And that's where Rebel Galaxy comes in. Now, this game is very arcadey, as I said, and it reminds me a lot of um, Freelancer, a game that came out a long, long time ago and is one of the best space games that I ever played, which is very simple, simplistic controls, uh, but had a lot of replayability. It was a very, very fun game. So along comes Rebel Galaxy, and I start playing it, and I'm like, wow, this seems familiar, and this is actually quite good. Now, it's not very often that I will start any video that is a review or a first impressions by just going straight out and going, this is quite good, but this is one of those games that had me hooked right from the beginning. Now, I've not got any options here to show you because all of the options for this game are in a launcher before the game starts, but there's a full list of options there. You've got resolution modes, you have uh, full screen, uh, borderless window, you have windowed mode. You can even select between DirectX 9, DirectX 11 and OpenGL, which is fantastic to see included in the game. You can also redirect the game's music library to your own MP3 library. So if you want to set yourself a custom soundtrack for the game, you can do that as well. Um, it's fully playable with a mouse and keyboard, which is what I'm using for this video. It also works with a gamepad. You can switch on um, PS4 button prompts instead of Xbox One button prompts if you want to. And the, the full graphic scale is there, AA... Um, texture filtering, uh, anisotropic filtering, everything is there. It's really, really well done. The game looks quite pretty as well. So let's go in and show you what the game is all about. So the first thing to notice is even though this is a space game, it pretty much only takes place in two dimensions. There is no up and down, so there is no roll. So you never have to worry about getting confused and not knowing which way is up. So all you can basically do is turn left and right and go forwards and backwards, but that is all you need. It works. So the first thing I'm going to try and do over here is dock in this um, station, just so that I can show you what you see if you dock in a station. We can have a look at some of the stuff here. So we have credits at the top. Rasputin is the name of my ship, and you can see how many credits I have. And there's a number of different things that um, you can do when you visit a station. Now, this is all mouse-driven, but you can also use the uh, keys or the controller if you want to. 
So first of all, let's have a quick look at the shipyard because there are a number of different ships available. Now, they may well be more ships than the ones offered here in the list. Can't 100% confirm that yet, uh, but it is quite possible. But as you can see at the moment, just in this station alone, there are six ships. The Hammerhead, which is the ship type that I am currently using, which is this thing here. Uh, it's not the best ship, but it's enough to get you out and about. After that, we have the Mastodon, which is a little bit bigger can carry um, more cargo. It's also got more broadside ports and more turrets. On to the uh, Tenhusen, which is even larger. And then we go on to the Scarab. And we're now getting something that's quite a bit slower, but it's quite manoeuvrable. This thing is a bit of a tank. On to the Vanguard. Now we're getting into the really big capital ships. This is a heavy uh, ship. And then finally, we've got the Manticore there, which is an absolutely huge, very slow barge. Uh, but this thing is a complete monstrosity of a tank. So you've got different ships that you can buy. Outside of the ships, you've also got the equipment bay, which are divided into three different things, and you can get upgrades for all of these things. So you've got your weapons. Now, I've got no ordnance on this ship at the moment. I don't actually have any ports for rockets or missiles on this ship. But the other weapon systems that I have, we have our broadsides, which is your main weapon that you use when you're attacking other ships, especially capital ships. You have your secondary weapons, which is normally a kind of a defensive weapon. So we can go and have a look at these. If we go into broadsides, you can see we've got a number of different options here. We've got Mark 1 pulse cannons, Mark 2. We've got tachyon cannons. We've got proton cannons. They get progressively more expensive. All the information about them is listed over here on the right-hand side. And it actually gives you comparison. So anything that's in green is better than what you currently have equipped. Anything in red is worse than what you currently have equipped. So it's nice that you've got that information there. You can actually buy stuff and have it sitting around in the hold of spare parts if you want to. So you don't necessarily have to um, sell everything that you take off. If we look at the secondaries here, you can see we have things like um, flat cannons. Very useful against fighters and incoming missiles. Uh, then we have things like um, launchers, dumpfire missiles. Uh, so basically just like torpedoes. You've got heat-seeking missiles. We've got um, EMP flak, mines as well. It's quite a lot of different stuff we can go for on secondaries. And then we've got the alpha and the beta turrets, which are basically the, uh, the top turret on the ship and also the underside turret on the ship. Now, one of these you can control manually, the alpha turret. I think the uh, beta turret just sort of fires off on its own. It's sort of automatic there. And as you can see, there's a, quite a few different turrets you can choose from with various different damage types. So those are some of the weapons that you can get. Then you've got defensive stuff. So you can upgrade your hull, which is the physical damage that you can take after your shields are depleted. Then obviously you've got your shields. You can increase how much of a beating they can take and how quickly they can recharge. And then you've got your deflector, which is something that you can activate manually that will absorb a certain amount of damage for a small period of time. And then finally, you've got things like the components on the ship, the engines, you can upgrade them so that you can travel more quickly. You've got your booster, which you can upgrade so that you can travel um, more quickly for a longer duration with a shorter recharge. There's the warp drive, there's a cargo hold, there's a tractor beam. There's a jump drive, and then you've got a couple of subsystems. You can get things like repair bots, maneuvering boosters, ordnance targeting, turret accelerators. Lots of nice little perks that you can pick up here to make your ship a little bit better. So that's basically the system for upgrading your ship. You can also repair if you take any damage. So there's also a commodities market. You can buy and sell things. You will have certain things in your hold. So I can see what I have in my hold here, like nuts and bolts, for example. I actually have nuts and bolts in my hold. I have one. Now, my, um, I do have some of the space taken up in my hold. I'm using half of my space. So let's go ahead and we'll just, we could use the mouse. I can just hit A and sell those bolts. Anything I have in my cargo hold will actually show up at the top of the list. So I've got some munitions. We could go ahead and sell those. We've got some yak meat. Let's go ahead and sell that. And we've got some obtainium, which is a mineral. We can go and um, sell that off as well. That gives us quite a little bit more money. And if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and buy some stuff if we had the money to buy it. And then we could take it and go and try and sell it off somewhere else. There is some uh, stuff that is considered illegal, which is contraband. And obviously, if you get caught smuggling this stuff by the militia, they are not going to be too happy with you. The game also tracks the um, sales average price of these uh, goods as well. So you can see if the price is falling or climbing, which is a really nice touch. 
So let's get back out of the commodities market. You've also got the mission board, which is something that you should be relatively used to seeing because this game does have a story mode. It has um, a campaign that you can play through, but as well as the main story missions, you also have these side missions that you can pick up. And different missions will give you reputation changes with various different factions. So as you can see, Bandits uh, at Aichi Cusp here would give me uh, plus 7 reputation with the cit citizenry, but minus 9 with the double jack thug. So let's go and add that mission to our list. Some of them require you to have a specific um, piece of equipment, like we need a tractor beam in order to do this mission. Now I do have a tractor beam, but the risk is high, which is why it's in orange, so maybe we'll leave that one for, low, uh, for later. We've got this one here, the almost flow, plus 6 with the citizenry, we could do that. And these ones are all high risk, so I'm going to leave those for the time being, because I'm quite early on in the game. I'm not very powerful at the moment. And we can look through the mission logs, and you can see that we have a few uh, missions there. This one's actually a um, storyline mission, so we'll ignore that one for now. So we've got a few different missions that we can do here. This one's very low risk. These two are low risk. So I can go off and sort of show you guys how those missions work. You've also got the bar here. The bar allows you to speak to various people. You can also hire mercenaries if you basically want a wingman to help you out. There's a news board which will basically tell you about anything that's going on in the area. And no, you can Mike, go up to the bartender. Now, unfortunately, one thing I will... Th there's two things that I found very strange with the audio in this game. First of all, there are some alien races. And when you're talking to the alien races, it's fantastic because even though they're speaking in alien language and you're reading subtitles, they've actually gone out of the way to make sure that every single sentence spoken by the aliens is uh, a different sentence. It's almost like, not that they've necessarily created a language, but it doesn't feel like they're just reusing the same old audio over and over again. And it sounds really, really impressive. And then, unfortunately, you come and talk to some of the other characters, and the voice acting is just absolutely terrible. Let me give you an example. Some of these militia captains come through here, and they say getting in close lets you really open up on a big ship. No time wasted calculating trajectories. There's so many minefields in the system, it's playing hell with trade. Pirates lay them down to slow up a convoy. And then they forget where they left them. What a mess. So it's a pretty unintelligible accent, and I'm not too sure what the voice actor was going for in this particular instance. And I've seen quite a couple of examples of this in the game that are similar. It feels a little bit cheesy and low budget. I'm not sure whether that was intentional or not. Or not. But as the aliens uh, seem to be so well done, it's really strange that some of the voice acting is a little bit hit and miss. There again, it is an indie game, and uh -huh. obviously... You do have to give a certain amount of consideration as to what budget they had to play with. So it doesn't really detract from the game all that much. To be honest, most of the time, their delivery is so slow, you just skip through the dialogue and read the text anyway. So let's go ahead and leave the bar here, and we're going to depart from the station. So we are back out in space here. If we go ahead and hit escape, you'll see that we have um, access to a few things here in the menu. So we can see the settings here. So you can actually see some of the options that you can change within the game. Obviously, there's far more things that you can change outside of the game in the launcher. Uh, we can remap our controls. There's also the tutorials that we can access from here as well. Anything that you get given... As a tutorial, as you play through the game, you can also reread it by going into this menu here. And then we've got some statistic, uh, statistics as well that will show us things like how many ships we've destroyed and basically little bits and pieces we've done within the game. And then if we use the two and three keys, if we're playing on the keyboard, we can go into our um, tactical display here, which allows us to choose between our two turrets, and we can actually cycle them between what we want them to attack, only to attack the targeted ship, only to attack things we're locked onto, just to target fighters or capital ships or turrets or just put it on manual. So you've got a little... Um, method to switch between targeting priority for the turrets which is quite nice uh, we've also got the ship systems here that allow us to see anything that we have so we can read up on any uh weapons or items that we're carrying around the mission log is in here as well we just go into there there we go we've got the mission log and we've also got a list of everything that is in our cargo hold which we sold off so how does the game control well it's actually nice and easy you see down in the bottom left hand corner there we have our 
um, sort of radar. Now, because this game really only takes place in 2D, there isn't any confusion about whether something is above you or below you, so everything is just in terms of it's in front of me, at the side of me, or behind me. You see those little golden diamonds represent the different missions that we can choose from, and all I'm doing is turning the ship by using the A and D keys. I can also use the mouse to rotate the camera around, which is actually tied to the top turret on the ship there. So that's how we manoeuvre around. Now we also have a few other options that we can do. You'll see some other things listed down there. Around the outside of the radar you'll see four white quarter circles which represent the hull of the ship. And then the little blue dotted circles that are on the outside of those represent the ship's shields. Now they will deplete over time if taking damage but the shields will also recharge. Obviously your hull doesn't recharge, you need to get that repaired. If you're taking heavy fire, you've also got the option to hold the space bar down, which will pop the deflector for as long as you hold it. As you can see, as I hold the deflector, the um, energy charge bar in the bottom left-hand corner disappears, and as it takes hits, it drains even more quickly, and once you release, it recharges. So you've got a little bit of an extra shield there. There's also the ability to scan if we hold down the tab key. If there's anything actually close enough for us to scan, we can lock a target and we can scan it, which will give us information about who owns it and does it have a bounty, what sort of cargo it is holding and stuff like that. Now one good thing with this, because the game does have these different factions, you've got like the citizenry, you've got various different guilds, like the traders guild, you've got the militia, you've got the double jacks, uh, you've got all these different sort of pirates, and if you want to, you can go and blow up pirates and get really good reputation with the militia, or you can go and blow up the militia and get really good reputation with the pirates, you don't have to play as a good guy in this game. Now obviously depending on the sort of actions you take and who you go up against and who you make your alliances with, you might find that some parts of the game become more difficult or easier, uh, depending on who your friends are. So that's basically explained everything on the interface. Apart from in the top right hand corner, um, you've got a list of the different controls. The command control basically allows you to do various different things. One of the uses, uh, most useful things here is the pulse which will send out this pulse and basically tag anything that was in range. As you can see, there's two enemy ships, those little red um, diamonds that have appeared there, so we've detected some hostiles. Uh, down there in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see our weapon selection, so we can switch between our broadsides Pulse and turret. between our turrets. Broad now, size. I don't want to do any damage to anything, so make sure there's nothing around. So the weapons that we've got at the moment, we've got our broadsides, which, which if I just quickly hit the left mouse button, will fire a charge from the broadsides there that kind of scatter off in every direction. The best way to use the broadsides is hold the right mouse button and you will basically get this targeting reticule. Now as you hold down the button you'll see those outer lines join the middle and once they hit the middle and it turns yellow that is fully charged. So if we now left click we will discharge all the rounds in the same direction in a tighter spread and obviously you can see it recharging when the beam turns yellow. So that's how your broadsides work. Very useful against capital ships. If you are dealing with smaller ships like fighters, pulse you'll turret. want to switch to the pulse turret. Now the pulse turret is free aiming, but it will also automatically snap to any hostile targets that are in range. And if you hold down the right mouse button, you actually have this sort of precision aim mode as well. You've also got the turret on the underside, which will or at the front, which will fire automatically. Uh, the underside turret does fire as well. They are both connected together, uh, but there is some automatic firing that will go on if you are using the broadside. So if you're using your broadsides, you don't have to worry too much about the uh, the turrets. And then finally, we've got our secondary weapon, which. You in my case is the flat cannon and this is basically used for destroying incoming missiles and it's quite useful against any fighters that are close by. So how do we move? Well, basically you see those uh, four chevrons in the top right hand corner beneath the boost bar and those four chevrons relate to our speed. So what I'm going to do, point the ship towards this uh, side mission and I'm going to use the E key to start to increase the speed of my ship. So as you can see, there's four different speeds that the engines can be at. Now, while everything is blue, we are traveling at normal space, and now we've just gone into subspace, which means we travel a little bit faster. 
Now, if you, if you come too close to anything that has mass, such as a planet or a space station, you will actually drop out of subspace and just sort of fly with your normal boosters. You can also use the W key to boost, and that actually drains your boost bar at the top right-hand corner there. Now, as you stop boosting, it will recharge. Now, this can be very useful in a fight if you're trying to escape from somebody or if you're trying to catch somebody up. So, you do have to be careful with that and use it quite sparingly. But when you're travelling a long distance, like we are doing here, we've got quite a way to go. We can hold down the E key and that will basically put us into warp. Now you can drop out of warp at any time you like by hitting the key again. But once you come close to your objective, it will automatically drop you out of warp. So I'm going to go and show you guys a little bit of the combat in this game. Now there's other stuff you can do as well as combat and trade. You can do mining as well. There's plenty of resources around. You can go and try and salvage stuff from wrecked ships. You can get a mining laser and go out and try and mine ores and materials and uh, sell it on the commodities market. Some of it you do need for missions as well. So there's quite a few different things that you can do. Now I can still steer the ship freely here. Oh, there we go. Somebody wanted to uh, attack us there, but we warped right past him, so he didn't really get the opportunity to. So, that's fine. We want to go ahead and do this uh, side mission anyway. So, as you can see, we're heading into a little bit of an asteroid field here, but it has pulled us out of warp. So, let's just make sure that we switch to our... Um, we're going to slow down a little bit. We'll use our boost to get into position. We can see the distance here. Now, what we're actually doing here is we are using our um, turrets. We've got missiles incoming, which are those little red triangles that we can see. Oh, now my shields are actually down on one side. I'm just going to pop my deflectors while we get the shields back up. Try and take some of these fighters out. We'll use the flat cannons as often as possible. Taking a little bit of damage on uh, one side there. There we go, not too bad. We'll just make sure we've got this thing on again. Just absorb some missile damage. Now these are just fighters. There's really no point in trying to broadside them. So as you can see, once I get close to it, the mouse uh, targeting actually locks onto the ship for me, which is nice and simple. Got an enemy behind me. So you can actually see I've taken some damage onto the uh, port side of my ship. You can see that it's all screwed up. I don't know if we've got missiles inbound, but I'm not sure where they came from. So let's just go ahead and do a pulse scan. There's a bounty over there. Who, well, you can collide with things as well, so you do have to be careful. You don't want to necessarily crash into everything. So we took a little bit of damage to the hull, but that's not too bad. So what we're going to do now is just switch back to our broadsides. Switching to broadsides means that the camera stays behind the ship a little more easily, which is fine. Let's go ahead and just sort of pulse again. So another good thing, of course, is if you hold down uh, control, you can actually see what your reputation is with the different factions as well. But we want to go over there and complete the second part of this mission, so we're going to go back to warp. So we will warp in here. There might be a capital ship to destroy this time around. And there is actually a gunship. Well, we're already in broadside mode, so we do need to get a little bit closer. So we can try and broadside some of these larger ships. So even though he's below me, it can make them a little bit difficult to hit sometimes. Collision warning, because that is a very big rock that I didn't see in front of me. And this is why you have to be careful when you're aiming like this. Now, these are mostly fighters, so we really need to be using the turret for this. Turret takes the fighters out nice and quickly. Gunship isn't really a capital ship, so we should be able to take it out relatively easily. Once we get through his shields... Didn't collide with anything there. He's gone. And I think there's one more hostile, which we'll go and deal with. Just another fighter. It's quite a distance away. So as you can see, some of these rocks are mineable. You can actually mine them if you just shoot them with a normal weapon, which is a, another thing. You'll do far better if you actually shoot them with a mining laser. But let's look at this rock, for, for example. This rock contains a particular type of uh, material. So if we go ahead and fire at this, I'm not sure if the broadsides will actually uh, work on it because of its um, height. Yeah, we can't really get that with the broadsides, but we can go ahead and just fire at it with our um, pulse turrets here. Eventually, it will blow up. Now, you also see down in the bottom right-hand corner that as I'm using the pulse turrets, it's actually starting to overheat. 
And when it overheats, we have to wait a little bit of time for it to cool down. You also see various bits of debris and stuff exploding as they collide with each other. Hopefully we'll be able to destroy this nice and quickly. All of the other ones that I've come across have been uh, close enough to broadside, but because this one's quite high, which I think is the only downside with the broadsides, is you can't actually get them to aim up and down. So even though the game does sort of take place in two dimensions, there is really a third dimension, but you've got very little control over it, which can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. Why can't I just move slightly up? And there we go, we've actually got um, meteoric diamonds here, which we can tractor in. And then we can go ahead and, and sell that. So we have a mission over here that we can do. So let's go and uh, deal with that mission. Now at the moment, we don't have the option to warp. So we're going to go forwards. We could, oh, we could boost if we wanted to. As soon as we get away from the asteroid field, we're going to sublight, which is what we're doing now. And as soon as we're clear of everything, we can just warp forwards and go into... Well, warp, basically. So as you can see, the game is quite simple to control. You're only using a few keys to pretty much do everything. And so far, there's been a decent variety in the missions. There's been uh, missions to seek people out for bounty and destroy people. Some of the AI is actually quite clever. I mean, they do tend to fly... Uh, fight you in formation which can be quite tricky I've also uh, seen a couple of occasions where I've been flying through space and I've just come across a huge space battle where there's been like 50 ships on each side you'll have 50 militia versus 50 pirates and there's just a massive battle in the middle of space and you sort of pop out a warp because there's so much mass there of all these big capital ships fighting and all of a sudden you find yourself in the middle of a battlefield there you go, you see a random distress beacon. You do come across random signals, so there is certainly uh, some merit to doing exploration in this game. You will find various things. So, there we go. We've got some bonus credits. Now, what have we got coming inbound? It looks like we've got some hostiles coming in. There we go, we've got a double jack gunship. Let's go to our pulse turret. Should be able to take his uh, shields out nice and easily. There we go, there's one down already. And sometimes as you destroy these enemy ships, they will actually drop uh, cargo, which you can go and salvage for yourself. My full forward shield's taking the brunt of all that, but he's out. Just avoided the collision there. A couple more enemies. There's another gunship. Looks like he's going for one of the tugs. They're quite some distance away, so just trying to get a, a little bit closer to them if we can. We actually popped into sublight there because we got far enough away from the asteroids. So there's another one down, and there's his buddy. Just see if we can get rid of him quickly. So the auto aim is quite nice, and I guess if you were using a pad, you'd probably really need that. So there's another mission done. So let's see if we can get back to the station now. So we'll hold down control, and we want the uh, closest station, which will be flagged up for us as a white... Um, white box there so we'll go back into broadside mode so it's a little bit easier to steer the ship and then we will engage our warp so you can see all of the asteroids and things appearing on the uh, on the map we dropped out of warp there because we got too close to an asteroid now we might well hit that one so let's uh, scoot around it if we can there we go, I think all of the asteroids are out of our way. So I've only done a few of the uh, story missions so far. They start off quite easy. The story's been interesting up to now. Uh, it does have very much a Firefly feel to it again, which, like I said, isn't a bad thing. Uh, as the game goes on, though, the, the difficulty of the story missions really ramps up. So you're certainly going to have to make sure that you get your ship upgraded, get a better ship, get some better weapons, get some better defences, because you'll soon run into problems with the story mission. And I think that's a good thing, because it actually sort of forces you to do at least some of the side missions to try and get some money and to try and get some better equipment. It would be far too easy, um, and it is far too easy in games like this, to completely ignore any side missions and just do all of the main missions. So, you can see we've got some of the militia ships around here. We are going to try and dock over here at this station. 
And as you can see, we've taken some damage. We need to repair our ship. Now we could repair the entire thing or we could repair individual parts. We'll just go ahead and repair the entire thing for 225 Repairs credits. Complete. And there we go. The ship is completed. There's another mission board here. You'll find different available missions at each different uh, station that you visit. And if we go to the bar... Uh, sometimes you'll find different aliens, different people you can talk to. The bartender probably has the same voice actor. Take a seat, mate. Indeed, it is. Seems like a almost like a. I'm not sure whether it's an Australian voice actor trying to do a different accent or whether it's a non-Australian voice actor trying to do an Australian accent. But there's something about it that just isn't quite working, and I can't quite make up my good mind day, about that. Mind you, just say good day, mate. So I assume he's trying to be Australian, but still, seems a little bit weird. That's the only real gripe that I have about this. So, what is there to say about the game? Well, it looks good, it plays good. If you want something that is a space based RPG and you want something that's more action orientated and less simulator, it's a very, very good game for that. Certainly, if you did like games in the past like uh, Free Space and. Um, uh, Star Lancer. Was it Star Lancer or Freelancer? It was Freelancer. I'll get it right in a minute. It was Freelan Freelancer. Um, it's a very, very good um, comparison with that. And I think it's something that you'd very much enjoy if you did like uh, Freelancer all those years ago. The game's nicely presented. The soundtrack is brilliant. The voice acting is a little bit hit and miss here and there. Um, as for any bugs and problems with it, bear in mind I started playing this game before it officially launched, so it was a slight pre-release. Um, any problems may have been fixed since then. I've only run into one bug myself, which is every now and then things don't necessarily spawn in. The ver as soon as the game starts, you have to dock with a station. Um, to do the first storyline mission. And the first time I loaded into the game, the space station wasn't there. And um, it just simply didn't exist. And after restarting, um, it appeared. And I know some other people have had similar issues with other items in the game where you have to, you know, go and find a specific thing and it just doesn't exist. It's not for any particular reason other than for some reason the game's decided not to... Uh, not to spawn it in. Uh, hopefully that is something that can be fixed with patches if it hasn't already been fixed already, which is quite possible. But this has been Rebel Galaxy by Double Damage. If you like um, space-based arcade RPGs, uh, i definitely go and check it out. It's quite a reasonable price at the moment. I can't remember the exact figure off the top of my head. I think it was around about the, um, the £15 mark uh, on Steam. So it'd be about $20 in the US. And uh, yeah, I think this one might be worth your time, so go ahead and check it out. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.